Hafidei. The Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs now convenes this public hearing. Public hearing notices were given to the media. The first notice on Thursday, November 21st, 2019, and the second notice was on Wednesday, November 27th, 2019. For the record, today is Friday, November 29th, 2019, and the time is now 520. The committee will hear and accept testimonies, both oral and written, on the following. As introduced by myself and Senator Clinton E. Rigel, an act to amend 2204, section 2205B3, section 2205B10B, and section 2206 of chapter two, title five, Guam code annotated, relative to simplifying the composition of the Guam Product Seal Task Force, updating terms related to Guam and Chamorro, requiring that it meets biannually instead of monthly, and clarifying the number of members needed for quorum and action. We will also be having the appointment of Chris Duenas to serve as a member of the Department of Parks and Recreation Board of Commissioners. And we had scheduled the appointment of Andrea P. Scro to serve as a member of the Guam Educational, excuse me, Educational Telecommunications Corporations, also known as KGTF PBS Board of Trustees. However, the confirmation hearing for Andrea Scro will be rescheduled to a later date. Joining me at this public hearing is uh, Senator Therese Terlahi, Saina Maasi for taking your time out, Senator. And the general rules for public hearing. Uh, the conduct of this public hearing shall be as follows. Those testifying will be recognized in the order of the sign up on the sign in sheets. Written testimony be reread. Lengthy written testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. Written testimonies shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide our legislative staff with your written testimony for photocopying. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Persons will be allowed to present oral testimony only once. When you are done, you may be asked to remain in the room for questions or for additional testimony as may be desired by the members of the panel. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is turned on and that you speak into the microphone. Please state your name clearly into the microphone for the record. We will now begin to hear testimonies on bill number 237-35. And um, actually for this particular bill, uh, I will read the opening statement and uh, we have a written letter of support from the Lieutenant Governor. And uh, I will read that into the record as well. Uh, and then Senator Chirlahi may be having some comments on that. So for uh, Bill 237, let me get my intro comments ready. Thirty-five years ago, in 1986, the Guam legislature recognized the need to protect the products made in Guam and our local entrepreneurs. By passing a public law, it was 18-42. This created the Guam Product Seal Program, which also helps assure visitors an authentic Guam experience. 25 years after the program's creation, a follow-up law re-energized the Guam Product Seal Program by elevating it to the highest levels of the government, and that was to establish a policy-directing body, the Guam Product Seal Task Force, which is under the direction of the Office of the Lieutenant Governor. 
The Guam Product Seal program has a proven track record of supporting local entrepreneurs and stimulating economic opportunities on Guam by promoting the manufacturing of local products. Businesses under the program have provided over 750 job opportunities to the local workforce and have great potential to grow even further as today we can see a strong presence of locally made products in our consumer market. Bill 237, which is before us today, strengthens the law's original intent and empowers the task force in several ways. The bill better provides the task force the ability to meet and thus support the entrepreneurs and the program's needs. It streamlines the structure of the task force from an unwieldy 15 members to a more reasonable and practical membership of five. To clear up any non-clarity, Bill 237 also updates the law to recognize its transfer in 2002 from the Department of Revenue and Taxation to that of the Guam Economic Development Authority. This is done in the bill by assigning the director of GIDA or her or his assigned representative to serve as vice chair of the task force. Further, Bill 237 streamlines the number of times the task force will meet each year, from monthly to biannually, as the program is by now quite developed and successful, making it unnecessary to meet each and every month. Just as importantly, Bill 237 expands the protection of the Guam brand by updating the orthography of the terms Chamorro and Guam so that the more updated orthography of Chamorro with the capital C and the capital H ending in the RU and Guahan are also protected. The bill also strengthens the protection of those names by stating that one cannot circumvent the intention of the law by using names or derivations in other languages or characters on products that are not made in Guam. As chair of the Guam Product Seal Task Force, Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio has expressed his strong support for this legislation in a letter provided to the committee and looks forward to the support of the co my colleagues at the legislature as this bill moves forward. At this particular time, um, I'll go ahead and open it up to see if there are any comments by Senator Chirlahi, and then I will read his letter of support into the record. Thank you. Um, I don't really have many questions. I just wanted to note that, uh, so the Guam Products Seal, um, is going to be enforced, continue to be enforced by GIDA, is that correct? And, uh, and so they've already got their rules and regulations in place and everything that they need to, to consistently enforce this program. And so we, the bill will be removing from membership on the task force, Reven Tax, the Department of Reven Tax, the Department of Chamorro Affairs, the Guam Visitors Bureau, the Department of Public Health and Social Services, the President of the Mayor's Council, and the uh, member from the Chamber of Commerce, a counselor from the Small Business Development Center of the School of Business and Public Administration at the University of Guam. And so I can see how this large task force uh, can uh, maybe does not need to be now that the program has been established and it's really just the enforcement part that we need. So um, yeah, I don't have really any objection to this. Just wanted to note that for the record. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Maasi, uh, Senator Tulahi, and it's it's good that you noted uh, because it's important that people uh, understand the previous composition, and the um, uh, another important aspect here is that uh, they will continue to be um, able to be called by the task force as needed. One of the things, and it's mentioned in the support letter, is that the transition team earlier this year, well, actually it was later last year, uh, did a report, they did an assessment of all the 
task forces and commissions and boards that we have, and uh, they found that we have an unwieldy number, and even for some of the agencies like the Department of Revenue and Taxation, if they were to go to all of their monthly meetings, uh, it would really impede on their ability to do the actual work for which they, they sit. But it is good to know that they can still be called upon for their advisement. Uh, but I appreciate you pointing out the distinction between the development and uh, the enforcement, which will be perhaps a stronger part of the program at this point. So in reading the um, letter of support, it says, uh, Dear Senator Marsh Titano, I write in strong support of Bill 237-35COR relative to simplifying the composition of the Guam Product Seal Task Force and making certain other updates as the author has deemed necessary and proper. Under current statute, the Lieutenant Governor of Guam is charged with chairing this task force. Yet, as our transition committee noted, many boards, commissions, and task forces are statutorily too large to achieve quorum on a regular basis. This unintended consequence often leaves the legislature's good intentions unrealized. I appreciate your recognition of the fact that service takes time. With this task force and others, community members want to serve but can rarely meet the monthly meeting requirements mandated in law. While these minimums serve a laudable purpose for many boards and commissions, these mandatory minimums are not optimal in every case. I know this simple piece of legislation may not garner many headlines, but its simplicity does not take away from its value. If, gover if government operates a little smarter, if it achieves a little more because a law was amended, we prove that we can be trusted to change things for the better, and that matters most of all. Sinceramente, Joshua F. Tenorio, Segundum Magalahin Guaha. So with that being the case, um, that we do not have any testimony and uh, we've gone through our comments. Um, I will go ahead and uh, continue, announce that we will continue to receive testimonies for the next few days. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination and Regional Affairs, and submit it via email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org, or uh, one can provide a hard copy to my office, which is located on the second floor of the Guam Congress Building. If you wish to mail your testimony, our address is 163 Chalin Santo Papa, Hagatnya, Guam, 96910. So for the bill, we will conclude the bill uh, portion of this hearing at uh, 532. And we will now begin hearing testimonies on the appointment of Chris Duenas to serve as a member of the Department of Parks and Recreation Board of Commissioners. Sainam uh, Asi, Mr. Duenas, for coming today. Uh, please go ahead and sit here. And I just remind you that before you speak, please make sure that the microphone is turned on and that you clearly speak into the microphone beginning with your name. Um, and so I believe we'll just go ahead and begin your testimony. Um, I did not prepare a testimony at this time, but I do fully accept uh, the responsibility of uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission um, that the government has bestowed on me to serve on the commission for a term of four years. And I'll answer any questions that you may have uh, in regards to the, that matter. Sijus um, Maasi, your willingness is uh, duly noted. I will let Senator Tulahi go ahead and begin with the questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
Thank you, Mr. Duenas, for accepting this nomination and um, for uh, submitting the information via your nomination packet. Uh, according to the letter from the governor, you are going to fill the unexpired term of Ramon Tapasna until January 2021. So, um, I have a few questions, but before I ask those detailed questions, maybe just give us a little bit of your background because the public is watching and maybe they just want to know a little bit more about you. They don't have these packets in front of you. Just tell us why you think you would be a good addition to this board that oversees the Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, so with my affiliation with the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation, I've um, been closely affiliated with um, the uh, Parks and Recreation um, Department because I've been swimming for the past 20, uh, 22 years now um, at Aganya Pool and um, the other pool in Dededo. Um, I did represent Guam at the Olympics from 2008 in Beijing and um, 2012 in London. And so um, I'm also affiliated with the Guam National Olympic Committee that does uh, rely heavily upon the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission or Parks and Recreation Depart um, Department to uh, upkeep those venues for athletes um, training for various competitions um, abroad. And so I think that my appointment to the commission will serve as um, one related to athletes that are going to use um, the Parks and Rec uh, facilities and as well as oversee those that uh, um, aid the uh, Guam Visitors Bureau parks as well. And so uh, my background is I have a bachelor's in economics and finance from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And um, apart from that, I've always been a member of Guam National Athletes Commission who also uh, aids athletes uh, with uh, grievances or uh, financial um, support from the International Olymp Olympic Committee. You're currently working at it &E. That is correct. That's correct. And um, you graduated from GW and then UH Manoa. You yes. said in uh, finance, right? Yes. That's your major? All right. Okay, um, well, of course, your, uh, your athletic career is very notable, and yes. uh, um, I want to thank you for that and for representing Guam so very well in, in your sports, and um, I'm sure you will be very, um, a very good asset to this board in, in making sure that these athletes, especially with your um, affiliation with the Olympic Committee, that making sure that these athletes get what what is necessary for them to train to properly represent Guam. Uh, I wanted to talk in particular about, so this board is a little unique in, yes. in compared to the rest of the government of Guam boards. This board actually um, appoint, or well, they, they hire the director for the department and many of the other line agencies that doesn't happen. So, so you're going to be responsible for hiring a director, you know, overseeing them and um, making, you know, kind of more, I think it's a little bit more responsibility because, yes. because of that. And so this parks and recreation, of course, you've seen, you probably, I'm, you know, athletes know this because of the, the, the sports facilities, but we also have parks that are, that have been the subject of a lot of attention in this this uh, legislative term since January 2019. We've talked about the parks so often. We've talked about them, uh, you know, the litter. We've talked about the broken facilities at the parks. And, you know, these parks are used by our tourists and our residents. And, and they're getting to be, you know, few, less and less places for residents to go, you know. So they have to go to the public places. And um, so they're very much relying on these to be safe and clean. And that's really been the number one complaint, right, okay. for Parks and Rec, I think, is, um, is the parks that are not safe, especially safe. So Parks and Rec has partnered with the Guam Visitors Bureau, and I think uh, they've almost taken turns or, you know, divvied them up and sometimes. And it just depends on where the resources are at the moment. Uh, when 
GVB has resources. They've taken it upon themselves to take care of the at least the top visitors' um, spots. To be, and they put now, you'll see here in Haganya, we have, um, they call them VSOs, Visitor Safety Officers. Yes. They're wearing yellow vests. They ride around on bicycles here in Haganya and two on different, different things. But um, those are, they're in the parks. So uh, we were having huge problems even with our parks here in Haganya being vandalized and uh, people actually accosting visitors and residents alike. So. So safety was a big issue. So, so we've seen some improvement, I would like to say, since January 2019. Mm -hmm. And we had, a, we had what the visitor industry calls Golden Week, I think. And yep. they really put a lot of resources into making sure it was safe. And they pretty much went incident free. Mm -hmm. So we know that this is possible. That's what they've shown us, that it is possible to keep the parks clean and safe. And it, you know, it takes resources, but it also takes focus, right? Yes. And so that's what we're hoping that this new board of the Department of Parks and Rec is going to focus on. We know that the department has some resources to, to I think, repair or you know, um, some of the parks. Yeah. But we're going to have to make sure that, I mean, we're going to continue to get complaints every day. Yeah. Every day, I think I hear complaints about this park is dirty, this park is, the bathroom's not it's locked or it's not working or but mostly it's the trash and yeah. we have not yet got this fail proof system of every weekend we know people party and every every monday a lot of the parks are dirty so you know i don't want to kill that topic but it's it's this you have to find a solution right something that you try anything at this point this has been going on for years so so we have to um, I think yet that these young new ideas are going to be beneficial. But um, my, my, the other point I wanted, the other way I think this board is unique is that uh, under the Department of Parks and Recreation is the Guam Historic Preservation Office. So our, our Guam Historic Resources Office. And they actually um, have oversight of you know, maintaining our historic places. Yes. It's a huge responsibility, I think. Um, and, you know, when a, within a department, maybe it's, uh, you know, with a lot of other priorities, it's difficult. But I guess I wanted to ask you in regards to that. So this particular resources, the, the Historic Resources Division of the Department of Parks and Recreation, um, I think historically has had issues right yeah. issues with um focus uh funding they've had um you know kind of a discord sometimes we've seen this publicly between the state historic preservation office which is supposed to be a classified employee within that division and the director yes and so because it, it deals with the director and you know we get these federal laws that tell us that the SHPO is the one who has to, who is the authority to sign certain things, and yet these classified, this classified employee is overseen by a director, right, which is overseen by a board, uh, ultimately appointed by the governor, that kind of thing. We've seen politics, we've seen um, just discord, just, uh, and so I guess I just wanted to ask you if you're familiar with this role that, that the Par Department of Parks and Rec plays, and if you you think you'd be able, in this position, to, to serve um, kind of independently without bias, as, you know, to political affiliations or any other affiliations? Because I think that's what we need in this place. Uh, thank you for the question. But um, I think, uh, for the most part, um, my role here for the Parks and Recreation overseeing the historic preservation as well um, as an economic background and one that has seen uh, the benefits of economics uh, within Hawaii itself um, to uh, utilize the resources that uh, the department is given. Um, I was given a short brief of what kind of resources we do uh, work with uh, apart from the TAF and where those resources go and I think uh, itemizing and utilizing those uh, resources to all kinds of, of beneficial and I would say more beneficial and strategically uh, planning out uh, a fiscal year plan um, 
within the next two years or so, um, and and uh, having um, the the board and the department work on those plans uh, more strategically than um, I would say uh, less strategically, as uh, we've seen in the past, as uh, some of those uh, plans that have been set out for the department and the historic preservation have fell through. And so I think uh, uh, having a solid plan for the next two years to uh, preserve those sites, and which we know uh, full well is one of the driving forces behind not just our tourism, but uh, as well as the self-determination uh, parties as well. Um, and I think that, uh, yes, that those are very important. And I think that there's a lot more that the department, as an avid user of the parks and, of parks and recreation, um, and I've seen on a day-to-day -day basis, we're there uh, at the pool and EPAL um, every week, uh, using it sometimes two times a day, and seeing uh, the shortfalls of the department uh, and um, some dealing with the contracts uh, that the department is uh, in, in with right now, uh, using outside resources and whatnot. And I think um, we need more strategic planning and that's what I'm there to do. And uh, I'll do my best without bias at all. Uh, and um, I think that uh, I can work with um, the other board members as well. Great, that's good to hear. And I'm glad to see you tie all of those things together. Yeah. I think that's the benefit of having a new eyes on these, these long time issues yeah. that, um, Yes, hopefully you, yeah, don't let them uh, push you into, no. this is the way we've always done it, right? <laughs> I think this is one area where we don't necessarily want to do it the way we've always mm -hmm. done it. And we can look back at, you know, I'm sure you know a lot of older people like yeah. me. We can look back and we can see how big Parks and Rec was in our villages, in our lives. It was, it was a huge driving force, whereas now it's a really... It's not, and, and a lot of that is their resources have shrunk, their staff has really shrunk, and so, you know, it's a, it's a cycle, and it's, it's kind of in a bad one right now, maybe, yes. but, uh, you know, I know that we've got a lot of hope for improvements based yes. on, you know, some federal funding and other things, but I think uh, people like you to um, really put some time into it. I really appreciate this is voluntary work on, in yeah. your part, so I appreciate your willingness to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to do it. If you need any help, just let us know. We're, you know, able, willing to help in any way, advice, anything. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Mahasi, for those uh, those good points, uh, Senator. So, I was noticing um, in your community and civic involvement that, as you mentioned, you're a member of the Guam National Athletes Commission. Um, you're a member of the Guam City Swimming Federation, and then you're a coach for the Manhoban Swim Club. So with those commitments, uh, I think they can work in two different ways. One, they show us that you're very responsible with these kind of civic engagements, and that you understand what kind of commitment and time these sorts of efforts take. With that being said, if, if you are part of these three uh, activities, um, do you feel that you will have time to sit on this board um, and you're ready to be dedicated with that kind of time commitment? Thank you. I think uh, they're all interrelated uh, in a sense. So I think that um, I, if uh, it comes to the fact that I don't have time, I'll make time because um, uh, this is the top tier of what we work with at um, Guam Swimming Federation and you know um, the Department of Parks and Recreation and uh, Guam Swimming Federation have always been in a constant battle as far as other, and as well as other uh, federations as well because that's our facilities that we use that's where we train and that's where we grow our swimmers so uh, being at this position which is why I uh, volunteered and um, even though this was an appointment but I still um, took on this role because I do believe that they are all inter uh, twined together, and it's it's all related, in a sense. So, Julius Masi, that provides a lot of clarity, and um, I, I think it's really important um, what you are pointing out, and that you have a lot of familiarity 
with these facilities. And I really am glad to see that with this board, that there are quite a few board members now that are familiar with and utilize different resources of the parks and recreation areas that it has oversight over. And I, I think that's gonna do a really good things because you guys are the, the eyes and the ears on the ground. You know the, the shortfalls or the benefits or the potential. Um, you have all of that to bring. And so I think those are very good things to be bringing to the board. And, and I'm hoping for some real differences there um, in those new types of experience, I think, that are part of the board. And with that, um, it was very good to hear about your abilities and familiarity with strategic planning. I'm a big believer in plans, uh, in action plans, strategic plans, all kinds of plans. Um, they're really important. Time slips by, and although a person or a department might have good intentions, uh, time can really run by if you don't have plans and, and goals and objectives and tasks and things. So I'm looking forward to uh, some of that happening. I've been working with the department and uh, I know that they've been developing a strategic plan. It's a, that is good to hear uh, that it, it can continue to be uh, developed and strengthened hopefully. And there's gonna be no shortage of opportunity to be a part of a lot of efforts. It has, um, the department itself has along with a lot of our other agencies. Um, there have been budget cuts and, and other issues that it's dealt with, but there are a lot of things that are happening. Um, we're working with them to develop a volunteer program, so certainly hearing from board members who might have thoughts or experiences in these areas, I think would be good. The Island Beautification Task Force has just been um, it just went into law that it's going to be working on exactly those issues of public littering and public facility destruction so that we have an umbrella entity that is going to be at the forefront bringing the Department of Public Works together, the Guam Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Parks and Rec together, uh, all of these entities together along with the mayors to see how they can work all together between their agencies and come up with awareness programs and so forth. Um, I also have a bill coming up on rip current and hiking safety that the Department of Parks and Rec is slated to head up. So again, um, you might have some real understanding there about some of those, those uh, concerns from the public point of view in keeping those areas safe and keeping all of our community members safe. But I'm sure all of these represent opportunities for you to be able to uh, sit on some subcommittees or provide some policy direction uh, and some things like that. We're also trying to get um, some service learning going on between the schools and the parks. So uh, if you're working with the Manhoven, uh, again, you might have some ideas or connections there. And updating the Adopt-a-Park program. Um, part of what we've talked about is updating it with uh, being part of Facebook, having um, media releases, having actual events, um, having recognition. So again, um, I think having a board that uh, uh, thinks about those sort of issues and maybe have that familiarity with the upcoming technology that they can think of directions uh, to help that foster and grow. So, like I said, there's probably no shortage of ideas and uh, I think bringing these kind of ideas forth uh, will be very good. Uh, like Senator Trelahi, I'm looking forward to the perhaps new ways of thinking about issues, uh, the new ways of interacting and connecting with these resources that this new board brings has a lot of exciting potential. Um, so with the different things that I mentioned, and there will be, uh, as was mentioned, uh, $5.6 million of improvements. We're hitting all those bathrooms, we're hitting uh, the park, pe uh, park benches and things like that. Um, are there any ideas that you've had on your own about 
the parks, the beaches, the other resources, uh, or anything that I've mentioned that you'd like to uh, talk about a little bit? Um, well, I would start with the pool. Uh, again, your pool, as it's been under a, a lot of scrutiny over the past uh, year, if not uh, even past administrations as well. But um, I think for the most part, um, my role, as I've seen throughout the uh, years, is um, the shortfalls of uh, outside contractors um, that we've um, hired and whatnot uh, to upkeep the parks in, in uh, their various uh, um, areas. And so those are other things that uh, I would love to address to um, this board is to uh, have a stiffer, um, uh, stiffer policies against those contractors that um, we do pay out on a monthly basis and, and, and whatnot and, and um, don't have deliverables um, in the end. And I think um, apart from upkeeping the uh, parks and uh, bathrooms, as you mentioned, um, we've seen them deteriorate over the years and we've seen them, uh, you know, sometimes get uh, re um, renovated and there was no upkeep to them and that was the main reason uh, one of the main reasons why Aganya Pool is in the situation that it is is that uh, despite all the renovations there was no maintenance uh, done on the pool so that's one thing that um, you know we've had a lot of involvement and we've had little say in uh, and so I think uh, that's one thing that we can change is the maintenance of the parks and recreation um, as a whole. That's good long-term thinking, I, I believe. Um, and those things are so important. We live in a wonderful place and a wonderful climate, but at the same time, the reality is, is that climate is very hard on our resources. It's very hard on our facilities. And you make very good points about um, us needing to make sure that our maintenance it's key. It's key to a lot of things. Um, it's key to, to upkeeping those. And, you know, I, I think that part of what's out there is um, some need for some behavioral change. Uh, definitely the maintenance is key. But as we've turned around the island uh, a few different times with the department and with the, the administration, uh, we could see that a lot of parts of the facilities were just broken, apparently just kind of because, because they were there. And so this is where we're hoping that some of that awareness program can really help. But uh, again, you guys are coming from a place where you might be able to give some real input, some real insight to awareness programs, uh, campaigns, that might be really effective, that might really help change. I think most of us care and most of us take care but um, I think for the few percent out there that we've got to try to reach them and help them understand that um, they can be part of the solution right but uh, certainly it makes a lot of sense that you have a lot of familiarity with the pool and so um, you have definitely insights that you should be able to to share there, but I appreciate that you've thought more broadly about the parks and, and other areas as well. And I just want to say that I also thought about the safety as well, uh, apart from the parks and uh, Oblong Tumon and uh, um, the lifeguards situation is always uh, quite scarce with the parks and recreation. Um, and, you know, that's just one thing that I think needs to be addressed. Uh, so apart from maintenance is the safety. Definitely. Um, and so when we're, we're building up this volunteer program, um, there have been people that have come up to me. We have uh, a good number of retired folk and, and other folk, uh, and people such as yourself that are willing to volunteer time for the benefit of us all. But some of these retired folk, um, they're really interested in safety for their neighborhood. They're really interested in upkeep of parks in their neighborhoods and things like that. And so I think we're very blessed as a community um, to have people who, 
who want to use some of their time this way. And again, getting back to that volunteer program, um, it can have a lifeguard aspect to it, it can have a patrol aspect to it, and a maintenance aspect to it, uh, depending upon the policy direction uh, by the parks themselves, you know, the uh, department itself. So I appreciate that you've been thinking in those different directions for what might come under your, uh, your role there at the board. And as was mentioned as well, the Historic Resources Division, which is our Historic Preservation Office, uh, does sit underneath the Department of Parks and Recreation, so there is some tie-in, although they do have a Historic Preservation Review Board um, that oversees them directly, but they still fall within your purview. So okay. um, I, I'm not sure, have you had much time to get very familiar with that part of the parks program? Um, not just yet. So I think uh, as I start getting, uh, when we come to our quorum, uh, I think um, I'll be briefed and uh, given more uh, to read about and uh, the functions of that uh, department. Okay, well, thank you again uh, thank you. For, for volunteering. Um, it really is something that we as the community, for all of the people that have been volunteering to be on boards, commissions, task force, uh, or just volunteering in general uh, in, in different ways for the community, um, we're very grateful. Uh, government is very important, of course, but it takes all of us together to, to make everything happen, um, all of our, our needs to, to help them be close to being met. So is there anyone who has not testified who wishes to testify or anyone else uh, who wishes to make any statements? There being none, this committee will conclude the public hearing for the appointment of Chris Duenas to serve as a member of the Department of Parks and Recreation Board of Commissioners. The committee will continue to receive testimonies for the next few days. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs and submit it via email to office.senatorkelly. Excuse me, at guamlegislature.org. My office is located on the second floor of the Guam Congress Building. You can either um, hand deliver it there, or if you wish to mail your testimony, our address is 163 Talon Santo Papa, Hagatnya Guam 96910. So do us maasi for your attendance and participation in today's hearing. Today's public hearing has now ended. The time is now 6.02. Have a good evening. <laughs>